Hello everyone and welcome to the first Plan Zoo video of 2024 where we speculate some future features that could be added into the game via free updates, along with some more ambitious features that could be applied to a Plan Zoo sequel instead, as a few of these features are actually quite hefty, but all requested in the interest of making the game better than it already is. Features such as more animal realism, remasters of earlier animal quality, and ways to improve the guest experience as well. Now, given the current situation happening at Frontier, I don't think many of these things would, would be able to happen, but it is always great to speculate. Now, I made a similar video for Jurassic World Evolution 2, so I thought I would include more features than I did in that one. And so, without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it, because there's a lot. I might as well get this one out of the way. More official animal remasters. Modders in the community have done a great job at bringing the animals of the base game and earlier DLCs up to speed with the current quality of animals in DLCs from the last two years. And it is surprising how many animals there, there are that can be improved. I've provided a small selection here of the animals that require improvements, but there are others that are not shown here that haven't yet received remasters, and many that I probably left out from my previous video listing the animals that require some work. What is so good about Frontier is that they can go beyond what the modders can do and improve the entire animal and adding extra details where they are needed and really polish it out as well. If a big remaster or a few remasters per update were to happen, I think it would be very beneficial for the game as giving a more balanced roster that all quality is kept at the same level. So you can see here we've got the African Lion, Grey Wolf, Red Panda of course, the new Red Kangaroo, Grizzly Bear, Bactrian Camel, Nile Monitor, Gariel, among many others. Birds and reptiles are known for one thing more than their relation to dinosaurs, both of which lay eggs, but currently in Plant Zoo they do not. This is a feature that would really add a lot of realism to the game, and it could go as far as even having nest material placed into the habitat for the birds and reptiles to build their nests with. This would be great for some of the mat more maternal species like rat eyes, penguins, and crocodilians that really take care of their nests and young well. Monotremes also lay eggs, so the platypus could also use this feature, and if an echidna were to be added in the future, then it could adopt this feature too. This would add a greater diversity to the, to the animals exhibiting this feature. The platypus, little penguin, and kiwi would be the only animals laying eggs in their burrows, and if we were to get an echidna, it would do the same thing. And there would also be a set incubation period along with the incubation of eggs. So I just think this would be a really good feature to give the animals a lot more depth and really um, set, differentiate them as well. When it comes to other mammals, it is a bit different, but this again would really improve the way the game works as the new births of animals like giraffes is a big occasion of the zoo. And there are all sorts of preparations and protocol that needs to be carried out for the calf's arrival. Plant Zoo as a PG game could make this less bloody than it is with the afterbirth and the placenta. Just remove all that. Just a realistic method of being born would be good. And perhaps introducing a new growth stage, that being infant, for animals which they would exhibit these animations and then grow to become juveniles. There could even be the process of an animal taking its first steps. This can improve the connection that players have with the animals in their zoos, as it's like you're following a journey as this animal grows and becomes stronger. The next step afterwards would be nursing. Now, in the game, there are no actual reproductive body parts on any of the animals, so the teats of which a young animal would be nursing from their mother are not there on the model. But it could be made to look like they are, sort of like an illusion with animals nursing from where they would in reality. Now, I know some other plants who created, such as Leaf, have suggested realistic copulation, and that could work it the same way as this without including anything graphic. It would just be an animation. Luckily for the animators, the process of mating is not as drawn out in wild animals as it is with humans, so it would be much easier for them to animate and rig. So, um, yeah. What do you think of this feature? Do you think it would be a bit too much, or are you happy with the way animals are reproducing currently? A working backstage system would be a great addition for players to better take care of the animals that they have, and potentially take on more animals of a species that may have a strict social limit, or even the possibility for interchangeable exhibitry to take place, where for one half of a day a certain species is out on exhibit and then changed out for another in the second half. I've seen many examples of this, I think 
a few years ago, Taronga Zoo, they had interchanging exhibits with a Kodiak bear and snow leopards. That was a few years ago. They don't have them anymore. But something like that is sort of what I'm going for here. Working gates, doors and hatches would also be great and can be set to the time they open to let certain animals through and shut other animals out. Another feature would be a complete set of backstage building pieces, mostly comprised of mesh and steel pieces to best recreate the layout of these areas. The last feature in this set would be overhead chutes and tunnels, allowing arboreal animals to move between holding areas, which leads on to my next feature. Overhead pathways are quickly becoming a common sight at many zoos around the world, taking advantage of the climbing abilities of many animals, as well as giving large predators more space to roam and allowing flexibility in the environment that they can access. Also giving visitors a great opportunity to experience these animals like never before. These could work somewhat like the tracks that the attractions work with, being able to be connected between habitats, or more like the barriers actually. This would make the habitats one, and the trackways being able to have different styles, shapes, and sizes depending on the animals that utilize them. An O-line system for breakating orangutans and gibbons, and potentially future spider monkeys, would also be a cool feature, moving between artificial trees and platforms to increasing their climbing space. This could also include placeable ragdoll ropes that will respond with the weight of the animals swinging on them. So all this stuff would be really cool to bring zoos into the modern light as zoos experiment and try new things to improve the experience of both the guests and the animals in their possession. Staff vehicles are a good way that staff would be able to get around big zoos much easier and give a much more realistic method of transporting both animals and food to different areas of the zoo. These vehicles can be a mix of carts, buggies, trucks that allow for a diverse range of jobs to be carried out with these vehicles. There could be a new staff building called Vehicle Depot, where all the vehicles are kept and then are taken off with staff to complete duties. And staff would be able to utilize them to get around the park quicker and more efficiently. This would be cool, especially when players are building places like safari parks and staff must run the whole way when they could use a vehicle instead to make it much more efficient. Because if you're realistically running that far, carrying a big box with a heavy animal in it, you would probably die of exhaustion, just saying. Enclosures would also have new vehicle gates to allow staff to enter in large enclosures to restock feeders. They can also act as a method of transport with a truck especially. Large animals and other species could be taken to enclosures in a much more realistic fashion in trailers and pet carriers for smaller species. But this would make zoos feel a lot more alive and like a working system. Maybe to better ensure they work properly, add in a route feature so that the routes can be set for the staff members to drive along to be more efficient. I said efficient several times, but it's efficiency. On the subject of vehicles, some others that could be implemented could be guest transportation such as buses and trams, and perhaps even electric bikes or segways or scooters or even their own carts that allow guests to get around the park in a multitude of different ways. These would be sort of more, more of a paid experience. So adding more ways of introducing income into your zoos by the use of private tours and private vehicles. So I think that would be a cool feature. And even the implementation of ambulance transport like wheelchairs would be great to add more diversity to the kinds of guests that can visit your zoo. This way, everyone can enjoy a day at the zoo that you have built. More attractions is something else that should be added. Something like a revised gondola ride that is more realistic and effective rather than the hyper-stylistic hyper look of the current gondola the game has. Some alternative safari vehicles like a tram or a full safari bus or truck rather than the 4x4 truck ride we currently have. This will allow more flexibility in how guests will be able to view open range species like giraffes, zebras, and rhinos. Something that is very apparent in zoos is the staff interacting with the animals of the zoo. So these can include the use of ambassador animals, animals that are kept backstage and brought out to interact with the public. These animals take many forms, using current in-game examples, raccoons, porcupines, binturongs, kangaroos, and younger animals like cat cubs. This could also be put into action with the backstage training that occurs between animal and keeper, where the keeper works up close with the animals, whether it's being inside the housing area or working from the other side of a mesh or glass. 
Keepers will even be able to go out onto the exhibit with some animals to both give the animals enrichment, but also strengthen their bonds, as is a, is a symbiotic relationship here. Then there is also the keeper talks, where keepers will call over animals to a point at the edge of the exhibit, where the animals are fed and educated about to the public. This would be a great next step for the educator talks that we currently have, and something that would be really great is proper crocodile feeding shows. This would also be incredible to see as I've seen the croc feeding show at Australia Zoo and it is phenomenal to watch and I would love to recreate it in Plant Zoo. So I feed in the current crocodilians like saltwater crocodile, American alligator, the gharial, Cuvius dwarf caiman and spectacle caiman, as well as potential future species like Nile crocodiles. The next step from there would be animal encounters and petting zoos. Basically, guests interacting with animals allow for a hands-on experience and guests taking away greater memories from their visit at the zoo. Of course, the encounters that involve the guests entering the habitat would be ones where the animal is safe to enter a habitat with. And a bonus would also be using real-life examples from zoos around the world. But then there can be encounters that have the guests at the barrier with one of the animals at a set encounter point and a barrier add-on that functions as part of the encounter point where the animal walks up to it. There could be different kinds, bird, reptile, carnivore, herbivore, and primate. And giraffe feedings are probably the most requested form of encounter, but the addition of others would be fantastic and would bring extra income into the zoo's economy. In terms of a petting zoo, it would function just as guests being able to feed animals from certain points on a barrier. And the animals in question would all be domesticated, as that's how petting zoos generally work, featuring animals like goats, sheep, cattle, ponies, pigs, chickens, etc. These domestic animals would also be able to play into a variety of different themes outside of a general petting zoo as well. New kinds of walkthrough gates and airlock systems would also be a great improvement to the experience of building walkthrough habitats. It would allow each to have their own character as they would be able to be entered differently. Some new gates could be a wooden plank door, a smaller entrance gate, a chain link gate, a glass gate that could perhaps have a sliding door variant, that would be cool and a steel mesh gate. Each could have an airlock version as well. This would allow for better flexibility in the construction of these kinds of habitats and for there to be a diverse range for players to utilize. This option would be great for habitats that contain primates and other climbing creatures and can help the illusion, create the illusion of a canopy. Adding ceilings or rooftops to the habitats, having it just as a modular option like the climb proof setting, but I might just speak on that quickly, like with the ceilings I'm talking talking about, the climb proof option should have a variation of the climb proof barrier look. Having the option for like an electric fence top and perhaps inward facing mesh or wire railing to add some different diversity to the enclosures and how they are ridged at the top. The ceiling would act like the climb proof option and will have different kinds of roofs that can cover the habitats. Wire mesh, chain link, netting camouflage netting and fabric tarp to add diversity to the, to the roofs of the habitats. I think this would just be great for recreating some of the modern zoo looks and yeah would just also add in potential for aviaries. A mesh netting system that can be stretched to different points through the use of metal columns and pillars would be a great introduction. The supporting of netting with these columns would be able to raise it to certain heights to house animals of many kinds, such as this enamel leopard habitat, where the netting and pillars have been raised to the height that leopards can be housed in this enclosure comfortably. These could act as variants of a barrier and just as an alternative to be able to create more interesting and unique habitats and give players the opportunity to create such habitats. Such as this one, the Snowden Avery at the London Zoo. What this is, is building on the idea of stretch points in habitats and barriers. And this could be a way of making successful aviaries without having to introduce an entirely new system. And the stretch barrier could fill the gap and add a nice extra feature to add here, which would be creating different barrier faces and create more unique shapes with your barriers. So I think that would be cool. This is one of my more obscure ideas, but what do you guys think of this one? I don't think I explained it too well, but hey. <laughs>
New hammock types is a kind of enrichment I would love to see, as the one hammock we have is somewhat stylized and can only be used by the two species, the sun bear and clouded leopard. The, the kinds you can see here would be a great variety that could be used around habitats, where they're hanging from climbing pieces or even from the roof of the habitat would allow for animals to sleep in different ways and enjoy the art of chill in different hammocks that would make the enclosures of arboreal species much more interesting and realistic to current zoos. They would be made of multiple different materials and hung in different ways, and have ragdoll physics, not the ones that mimic logs or rocks, and will shape based on the animal's position in it. Sand rock rockwork and trees would be fantastic to add to the artificial reality of many modern zoos. Basically what sand rock is, is cement style to look like natural features. And having a great diversity of rock shapes, trees, and even logs too, would be a great way to have this feature be much more flexible and usable for many different habitats. If we could get a whole set of this stuff, it would be fantastic to create the barriers that are seen nowadays in zoos, rather than having to utilize other pieces to recreate. A bonus would be that they would be flexicolor, like the Indonesian bricks from Tropical Pack and the way their flexicolor works. I think that would be very beneficial to these sand rock, rock works. We have gotten restaurants and we've gotten souvenir shops, but something I've always wanted to see added to plant zoo is guest accommodation at the zoo. This can take many forms like yurts and tents, as well as cabins that are set at the edge of the habitats. There could also be rooms which have a setting of a window at the end of the room. This would allow for an immersive and creative experience for both guests and players, merging the world that guests need and the world that animals need and bringing them together. Something here in the image of the National Zoo and Aquarium here is where the sun bear is, you've got sort of sand bedding uh, for the areas next to the rooms. And I think that would be a really cool addition as well. Like restaurants, souvenir shops, and the zoo accommodation just mentioned, another bonus feature that can be added would be the playground. To allow the younger zoo visitors to allow them to climb like a lemur, slide like a seal, and jump like a kangaroo on various items. That can allow them to blow off steam such as slides, trampolines, jungle gyms, climbing frames, tunnels, bridges, swings, and multiple other items found in a zoo playground. Even multiple new animal statues of every animal would be cool to have to decorate both the playground and area around it. But unlike the previous modular guest items, playgrounds could be placed apart from each other to make the playground, the playground as big as players want. This would be a great way to introduce more freedom with the creativity as to how players design their playgrounds. And each could function as they would in reality. The ability to have exhibits of different sizes and shapes, being able to make them more modular would be a great way to make the exhibits more interesting and allowing the animals to move around a little bit more too. Not to have that animal level, but more of what they do currently, sort of like what the Herman's tortoise does, which is where it moves on a looped animation. But it, that's about as far as we need for these kinds of animals. Being able to have them with an open roof can allow for a great diversity of exhibits between different species. As part of this update, something that would be cool would be receiving a multitude of new exhibit reptiles, amphibians, and potentially some new invertebrates as well. And maybe even some new bats and perhaps a two-toed sloth as well. All these would be coming free to this update to really make the exhibits a lot more interesting and give us some of the exhibit animals that we've been sorely missing, like cobras and chameleons. It would allow for the exhibit animals to be displayed in new ways and boost the roster that is currently lacking in comparison. If this update were to come true, perhaps an addition of eight snakes, eight lizards, eight turtles or, and tortoises, eight new invertebrates, five new bats, and the Lynn's two-toed sloth. That would be my dream, but maybe cut down to maybe five each. That, that would be ideal. And being able to have exhibits on their own, so like the walkthrough exhibits, where you ha currently house the sloths and the bats, having the option to remove the path, I think that would be a really cool feature to give them standalone exhibits. And that could be another feature, adding in standalone exhibits of different sizes to house different kinds of animals. Two new sets of climbing items made of planks and full logs, as you see on the left, and then on the right, a bunch of climbable metal shapes like branches, and give the ability for climbing to be enriched for the primates allowing primates to climb from one piece to the next. This would be 
particularly apparent with orangutans as they really do crawl through the treetops. So that would be a, almost a, a whole overhaul for how primates climb, but it would be fantastic nonetheless for especially the male pieces, but at least the planks, the plank and log pieces to give them a different look as well. Larger maps to accompany larger zoos is something I really want to see in the game. As when I was building my San Diego Zoo Safari Park inspired adaptation, which was not close to how it is at all. By the end of the build, I was running out of space. So the ability to have large or even huge expansive maps, it would allow for players to not have to worry about barriers in sandbox mode, being able to build free of restriction. Regarding maps, more maps with human elements on the skirts, like even city or urban areas, that would give it a really cool reflection of how zoos are being somewhat constricted, as it's sort of a new kind of barrier that zoos have for expansion. When a zoo is in the middle of a city, they're required to think more internally about future projects and expansions, finding ways to better the zoo because expansion outside isn't an option. I think both ideas would be very cool. Just an additional feature would be having more coastal maps. Maps that back onto the ocean would be great with beaches and waves. And if we were to get a coastal themed DLC, then a certain portion of the ocean could be utilized as part of the zoo by keeping some kinds of fully aquatic animals in their natural habitat. But what is more difficult is underwater tunnels. These exhibits aren't exactly uncommon in a zoo setting. In aquariums, they're associated with oceanic tanks containing sharks and other fish. In zoos, it is much more often that the animals will, will be polar bears, seals, penguins, otters, and crocodilians. If Frontier could add this, it would function somewhat like the, how the viewing domes work. So they would have an entrance and an exit at the opposite end. And guests would be able to go through, see the animals in the water. And I think that this is the probably the best way it could work. Being able to alternate shape as well, perhaps even having it snap. Um, shapes snap between the entrance and exit, it's depending on the layout, of course. I think it would be a pretty cool feature to add and really add to the diversity of the kinds of aquatic habitats you can build for your animals. Given the ability for both pangolins and Nile monsters and Asian water monsters, the ability to climb would be great and add new ways to which their exhibits could be customized. A bonus from giving the pangolin the ability to climb is that a future Tamandua could utilize the same rig as they behave in very similar ways. So this feature would come with benefits. Another new behavior I'd like to see is undulates hopping along the bottom of water bodies. This would be good for animals like hippos, Indian rhinos, tapirs, and even water buffaloes to exhibit some great new behaviors that would give them more character. Animals playing in water would be another great feature here. As animals like canids and elephants get very playful in water, so that would be a really cool feature. Easily the most requested feature is flight. The addition of flying birds to plant zoo is something most of the community really wants. If anything, it is likely to be the last pack we receive in the update feature of flight and Avery housing along with it. Birds are interesting in the sense that they would re require several perch points and if my egg laying idea were to come through, the unique nesting methods of a variety of birds, such as here you can see the hanging nest of an oropendola um, hanging from the tree dress there. So unique nesting methods of, of a variety of birds would be great to see here. In this picture alone is a greater diversity of different birds than we currently have. Here we see green oropendolas, southern lapwings, white-faced whistling ducks, wattled curassows, bare-faced curassows, and kokoi herons. If we were to get this update, the game would be at a new level of diversity when it comes to birds and add more creativity for the players to unleash with their exhibits. Ideally, the Avery DLC would have make some exceptions of a group of birds too, to diversify, just like one with macaws, as having different colors would be a great opportunity for more diversity. But overall, having three to five birds to represent each of the pre previous DLCs before it is probably the best option here to make the roster much easier to identify. If we could get all the birds in this picture, I would be really happy with that. after flight is fully aquatic species that is something that people have been asking for for as long as they've been asking for flying birds zoos do contain aquatic creatures most requested of which is the manatee 
this kind of mechanic would have to require some kind of hitbox to the land and potentially a new method for which the staff and animals access a habitat. A method for introducing animals to the habitat could be some kind of crane that lowers the manatee or other fully aquatic animals into the water, or alternatively, for the staff to have a stared platform at the top of the habitat and the staff will jump into the water in scuba gear, or there are some specific marine keepers, marine vets and marine mechanics to specialise in these kinds of habitats. But if this were to be added, the manatee would likely be the only animal to have this feature. And hey, if we were to get it in a coastal pack, then all the other animals would be much, much easier to make in comparison. Would you guys like to see a fully aquatic mechanic? Or do you think something like this should be held off for potentially a planet aquarium? Yeah, this one is tricky. Another improvement would be having much clearer viewing glass to view animals through make it much easier for the guests and players to see the animals through it, and for the animals to interact with guests at the window. This is quite small, but it would be valuable nonetheless. Escalators and elevators would be great methods to avoid the tedious staircases and pathways to get down hills, slopes, and other obstructions that don't really look too neat in a build. I tried it before and got messy. These, however, would be able to improve the experience and would be very helpful in indoor exhibitry like indoor jungles, multi-level reptile houses and marine centres too. It would definitely assist in guest flow and optimise transportation to avoid clustering. Now here I just went onto the update feature wishlist over on the forums of which I will link in the description below so you can read it yourself. And so there are a lot of uh, features that people are asking for for that I'm not included here, but I agree with all of them. And many of these things could be potentially applied to a planet zoo too. But it would of course be better if Frontier could just add these realistic touches and other features to the planet zoo we already have. Just make it even better than it already is. If you want to pause the video to read all of these, as I would run out of breath reading all of it, but the forum page has all the details next to them of what they would entail. But many are self-explanatory. We have another set here, and so that is every feature being requested for Plan Two. There are a lot. Likely, many of them would be pretty easy to implement compared to others. But there are any other, if there are any others that you would like to see added that haven't been featured here leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, if you think I deserved, I would appreciate a like, and if you would like to see more, please subscribe. We are edging closer to 1,000 subs, and let's see if we can reach that goal in 2024. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.